Just this past two weeks, I did a video called um, Sweet Baby Jesus is Coming. The second one was um, I Want to Debate God. And the third one was Sweet Baby Jesus Wants to Open Up a Church. And when I did those three videos, I saw my subscribers go from 5,038 and drop down to 5,015. And um, this is not for my loyal fan base. This is dedicated to those that are religious. You see, I understand you all now. You didn't have a problem with me when I was talking about politics. You didn't have a problem with me when I was talking about dead rappers. You didn't have a problem with me when I was talking about any and everything that didn't have nothing to do with you. But the moment I said something about your religion, the moment that I talked about Christianity, the moment that I talked about your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you get all sensitive. And some of y'all have said, I'm unsubscribing as if, like, as if I care. Because overall, this channel was not meant for religious people. Even though religious people can be on the channel, you all can enjoy this channel just like any and everybody else. I don't judge anyone whether you're gay, whether you're white, you're black, you're green, you're purple, you're Mexican, whatever. Anyone can be on my channel. Anyone can look at my videos. But at the end of the day, this, this, this channel was not geared towards religious people. Or people that's going to get sensitive in every little thing that I say. So, this video right here would determine if you all subscribe to my channel. Because this video, if I haven't said it already, will let you know where I stand at when it boils down to religion, when it boils down to God, when it boils down to your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And notice I said your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's begin. Are you an atheist, Langston 2092? Now I can go, I can get real super geeked on you, right? Super nerd. And use this dictionary of etymology. Etymology dictionary and look up the word atheist, right? But I'm not going to go there because I'm simple. I like being simple. I like building with the common folks. So I'm not going to go there. I'm going to use your definition, Christians, on what an atheist is. And according to you, an atheist is anyone that does not believe in God. So Langston, do you believe in God or not? And my answer to that is yes, I believe in God. But my, I don't have an external God. I don't praise someone that's up there. Even though there's no such thing as up there when you're in space. There's no left or right or up or down. The God that I praise is the God within me. The Lord and Savior that I praise and that I look up to and, 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 and that I know that will save me is me. The Trinity that I respect and praise is me, myself, and I. That plain and simple. Not the Father, not the Holy Spirit, and neither Jesus. That plain and simple. And it's crazy because some of you all may say that that's blasphemy. But at the end of the day, it's in your Bible. It's God's word. God said in Psalms 82 verse 6, I have said that ye are gods and children of the Most High. Period. Now I may not be omnipotent, all-knowing, and all the rest of that, like your God. But God did say I was a God. And by the way, I, I get tired of people saying the most high. The Wabian say it, the, the conscious community says it, some of the Christians say it. You all, you, do, do you understand when you say the most high what you're saying? You're praising an adjective and an adverb. The adjective being most and the adverb being high. The most high what? Which makes no sense to me. Yo, let me, let me tell you this, so I wasn't always like this, you know what I mean? Um, I went to church, I was raised in a Christian home, and my mother used to go to this small church, never forget it. My best friend at the time, 
that was the, his father was the preacher of that uh, church and the deacon was his uncle never forget it right we used to go to Sunday school you know go to regular church and I'd be pissed off because you hear it here it is the games you know Dallas Cowboys versus Giants they playing and it's going on three o'clock we still sitting in this little little ass church right I'm ready to go home so we used to have these powwows every Wednesday, right? It was a fellowship meeting with nothing but the, the, the men, the young men and the teenagers, teenagers, the young men and the older men, right? So the pastor, the, you know, my, my, my best friend, me, the pastor, the deacons and a couple other people, right? That was part of the church. Sat down, I never forget it. I, I've been to this, these meetings several times, but this one really like stuck in my head, right? So we sit, I'm making a point. We're sitting down and we're discussing Egypt. And the pastor's like, yeah, because the Egyptians were devil worshipers and they had dreadlocks and that's evil, that's sinful. And then they had these animal heads of an eagle and, and another one of a cow and exactly. Etc. Etc. And I'm sitting here listening to them, right? So I'm absorbing. I'm taking it all in because they're elders. So I assume that being that they're older, they know what they're talking about. It wasn't until I uh, got knowledge itself to know that they were desecrating African culture. These same men that talk shit about the Egyptians. Later on, a couple weeks later, had a Super Bowl party. Never forget it, right? Plain as day. Here we are. We got Kentucky Fried Chicken, pizza, pepperoni pizza. We got uh, buffalo wings. We got some of everything, right? Everything that is, that's, that's not good for us. Even though we're supposed to follow Jesus in his footsteps. And Jesus fasted. And I don't recall Jesus eating pork. I don't recall Jesus eating pizza. I don't recall Jesus eating uh, 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 potato chips. In other words, I don't recall Jesus ever eating junk food. So here we are, we're looking at the game. I don't remember what exact, what team exactly it was, but I knew it was like a team that had an animal as the mascot, right? So it could have been the Dolphins, could have been the Bears, could have been the Falcons. So we're looking at this game and everybody jumping up and down and we're going crazy and everything. And it dawned on me later on, once I got knowledge itself, here you are, you bash the Egyptians for wearing an animal over their head, but yet and still you praise and you respect and you honor that NFL team that has a mascot running out, such as your Bear, your Chicago Bear, such as your Atlanta Falcon, such as your Miami Dolphin. So what I realized at that point in time was it was okay for you to practice American culture because that's not sinful, that's, that's of the God, that's of God. But it's not okay for us to practice African culture because that's a sin and that's of the devil, which makes no sense to me. Which makes no sense to me. And these are the contradictions that the Christians are made out of. I'll give you another one. I sat down and had a conversation with my mom. Till this day, she still have not answered my question. Matter of fact, she told me, uh, let me call you back and hung up on me when I asked her this. The Africans and the Haitians practice voodoo, right? So they perform this ritual where they cut the chicken head off and they'll use the blood at, in the ritual and you know that's how the ritual goes you know they pray to a god or whatever have you and that's how it goes right just for example the Christians every Easter in celebration of Jesus dying and resurrected takes a cracker and that cracker is the symbol of the body of Christ and they tell you to eat it. The Christians take Welch's grape or grape juice and that is the symbol of the blood of Jesus and they tell you to drink it. Is that not a ritual? Is that not the, is that not the, is that not the same of what the Africans and Haitians do? As far as practicing voodooism in comparison to what the Christians do when they want to respect and honor their Lord and Savior dying on the cross and resurrecting. And I can go on and on and on with the BS.
Or what about like, I, 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 I never understood this. Why did God create the devil? Knowing that one day he was going to have a war in heaven, right? And he would be cast down to what? Earth. Why couldn't God punish the devil by sending him to hell? Because that's what Christians will tell me if I am not saved. That's what Christians will tell me if I don't accept their Lord and Savior Jesus that I'm going to hell. So therefore, this is a fear tactic. And I'll say, I'll go on, out on a limb and say, damn this 75% of Christians that are Christians are really not Christians. They're just scared because people have told them, such as their family members and others, that they're going to hell if they don't become Christians. So I'm just trying to understand why are we thrown in hell when we sin? But the devil is never in hell. He's on earth wreaking heaven, havoc. So therefore God intentionally set us up for failure. Because he knew that the devil was going to come down here and harass us. And entice us. And lure us into being evil. Or creating evil. Then after we do bad, God throws us in hell. That does not make sense to me. What is the devil's purpose? I'm trying to understand that or trying to overstand that. I'm trying to understand or overstand that God, why would God be a jealous God? In Exodus chapter 20 verse 2, he said, Thou shalt not have no other gods before me, for I am a jealous God. Now I'm assuming when he said that, he knows that there's other gods that exist that will treat me better. In specific, an African God, such as Yah. So therefore, he knows that there could be, there's an African God that can treat me better than him. And he is jealous of that. Other than that, why would he be jealous? That is a human attribute. Matter of fact, that's a human flaw. And my mother always taught me not to be jealous of someone else. I don't understand that. Make me understand when I read Revelation chapter 1 verse 15 and it states that the Messiah had hair like lamb's wool, feet like burnt brass, and eyes as flame as fire. Make me understand when I look at the average person that has a cross on their chest of Jesus Christ, he's depicted white. When I look at the pictures that are in Every, just about every black woman's or black man's home it is of a white Jesus Christ. And when I go to my grandmother's church, it's a big mural of a white Jesus Christ. Make me understand if this Messiah existed and he is black, why is everybody depicting him as being white? And while you're making me understand that, Make me understand in Exodus 20 verse 4, it said, Thou shalt not have no images, graven images that is, of the heaven or in the earth. So therefore, if you all have any type of images, regardless of whether it's a Christian cross or whether it's a depiction, a falsely depiction of Jesus Christ, you are actually creating commitment to sin. Because in Exodus, Exodus 20 verse 4, it said, Thou shalt not have any graven images of the heaven or earth. I'm just trying to understand. Make me understand. Make me understand this. Listen, hear me, follow me. Come with me. Make me understand this. I need a car to get around. Transportation. Right? I go to the car dealership. I tell them I need a car. They point to, to this car over here. They said, this is an affordable car. We range your, your, your credit score. And right here, you can walk away in, with this car if you put $700 down, down, uh, de deposit down. And it's great on mileage. It only has 40,000 miles on it. And blah, 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 blah. And I say, hey, okay, that's cool. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me just get the keys. I want to do a test run. I get in the car. I drive. I go down the highway. I speed. I slow down. I brake. I make sure the brakes is, is, is working. I make sure that the air condition works is functional. I make sure that the radio is on and all the rest of that. I check the, uh, the, 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 uh, um, what is the liquid levels to make sure that the, the oil has been changed and you know the freon in the car I check the radiator I make sure that the head gasket is not blown etc come back I get the car because it's a good deal right 
I drive off with the car, case solved. Now I gotta get, I need somewhere to stay. So I'm driving around, I see this for sale sign out in front of this house. It's a number up there, it says 704-962-2288. I call the number, the, 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 the guy picks up, he says, hey, yeah, I'm selling the house. He's, he, gives, he quotes me the price. I say, that's a good price, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking at the outside of the house and how the house looks good from the outside. But you know I can't purchase the house without going in the inside to look at it. I'm making a point here. If you're following me, you'll truly understand where I'm coming from when I get to the end of this story. The guy comes, give me the, 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 the keys to the house. I go inside the house. I check the doors, uh, the, the, door, the door knobs. I check the rooms. I turn on the faucet, make sure that the water's running properly. The, 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 the electrical wiring is good. The air condition works, the heat works. Um, uh, uh, it's upstairs and downstairs. Make sure that you know I go upstairs and I don't fall through the ceiling. All of that stuff. Once. I find out that the house is nice. I go look in the back, back room, excuse me, back room. I go look at the backyard, I go look in the front yard, I look on the side, left and the right. I go see my neighbors and I look at the whole community. And once I see that everything is straight, I sit down with him and I, 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 I tell him, yo, I want the house. He say, fine, you know, I go to the bank, I get the loan, I come back. I got mortgage for 20 something years, case solved. Now I'm looking for a wife find a beautiful wife and based on Christianity I can't have sex with her or rather I can't make love to her until after I'm married. That doesn't make sense to me because I have to exchange vows and within, the strength, within exchanging vows I'm going to be with this boy for the rest of my life. What if a pussy is dusty like Desert Storm? It doesn't get wet. It's dry all the time. What if she doesn't give good head? What if she doesn't want to actually have sex? And even though sex is not 80% of the relationship, it definitely plays a part. And I can get deeper with it because there's a thing called sex magic. So having sex has its healing powers. But I'm not gonna go there for now, for the sake of this video. So therefore, I don't believe in having sex after I get married. No, I want a taste of it now so I'll know once I marry this broad, 100%, this is what I'm getting. We do it, everything is good, I'm married, I got a house, I got a car. Now it's dealing with my, what, soul. Gotta make sure that my soul is right, right? So I do good, I do charity, I go to church, I pay my tithes, I give my offerings and all the rest of that stuff, right? I get old, I die, let me take it back. I get old and then I say to myself, I'm about to be dead soon. God, Jesus, or any Christian, could you all let me know what heaven is like? Like actually what it's like, like I need to see, I need to get a little, like just open the door a little bit so I can just put my, my head in and peep at how heaven is. Now, if they have women there, they have nice cars there, they have clothes there, they, they, it's, it has potential. I can, I can be, uh, 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 I can, I, my goals can be achieved in heaven. Every now and then I can <coughs> uh, get that yak. I'm good. I'm good. That's heaven to me. And Tupac, Biggie is there, and Bob Marley. And I can chill with, with Marcus Garvey as well. And Malcolm X, Michael Jackson and Prince is there. James Brown, that shit sounds like heaven to me. I'm in. But if that shit, if I walk in there and I see a bunch of butt naked white men and little babies and women with wings on their back and we petting lions and tigers every day and we can't have sex, I tell you what, I don't want to be a part of that. Do you understand where I'm coming from? I need to know where heaven is at and I need, I need to know what heaven is like before I take this vow, make this vow to say, you know what, I'm never going to sin again. I'm, I'm going to be a good guy and I'm going to serve the Lord to the T. And this is the point that I'm making because you Christians can't answer it. 
And now, do you know what it feels like to be embarrassed? Because you all embarrassed me first. When I was young, you harassed me. You told me if I did not get saved, if I did not accept your God, that I was going to hell. You, 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 you do understand that there's only two people, two, two religions that, that do this stupid shit, that harass you. That's the Christians and the Jehovah Witnesses. They go as far as to knock on your door. You, have you ever seen or heard a conscious person come knock on your door and say, if you don't accept Holly Selassie or Malcolm X or Marcus Garvey or Noble Drew Ali in your, in your life as your Lord and Savior, you're going to hell. Have you ever heard of a Muslim telling, knocking on your door saying that if you don't worship Allah, then you are shaitan and you're going to hell? No, only the Christians do that. Only the Christians do that. And it makes no sense to me. So at the end of the day, I believe in myself. I don't believe in your God. You want to know why? Because your God works in mysterious ways. So, so much of a mis mis mystery to the point where it does not make sense. For an example, you knew that the coronavirus virus was going to kill over 200,000 people in America, but yet and still you allowed it to happen. And now you won't even cure us, God. So that's a God that I cannot worship. A, a God that gets jealous? A God that creates a demon, the devil is a demon, to harass and literally kill human beings for no known reason. And a God that if I ask him for something, he'll, 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 get, he'll have me get hit by a car because according to the, Christ, the, the Christians that, okay, well that was, a, that was a blessing, you got hit by a car. Or they'll say this, you're on an airplane, the, air, the airplane crashes, and 80 people die and you survive. And the Christians would be like, I like to thank God. What in the hell? So you're thankful that you survived, but 80 other people didn't. Makes no sense to me. I am drawing the line across the sand. Either you are with me or you against me. Period. Call me the Antichrist. Talk about my big nose. Talk about how I got this messed up beard. You know what I'm saying? I, last time I looked at these images, and, and even though you're not supposed to have in, images because it says in Exodus 20 verse 4 that you're not supposed to. Last time I checked and saw your, your, your white images of your, your Lord and Savior, his, his beard was raggedy as shit too. He had on them raggedy ass clothes. At least with the Egyptians, I could mess with them because they was getting down. They was more my steeds. You know what I'm saying? They had to drip. Jesus didn't have nothing. He ain't even own a camel. He died broke. Get out of here with that, man. I'm not trying to hear that anymore, man. Get out, get off my channel. Get off my channel, because I'm not playing games. So at the end of the day, I expect another purge. I expect another 30, 40 people unsubscribing because I just really didn't know just how many Christians were subscribed to my channel. I suggest you leave. If you are religious and you take your religion that deep, because I am going to talk about your religion at the end of the day. Other than that, my name is Langston2092. I want you to like, comment, subscribe, and definitely share this video and support sweet baby Jesus. He is coming soon. And he's definitely opening up his church.